Hello beautiful people of the internet and welcome back to my channel. Guys, I'm so, so, so excited for this reset. Listen, there's a lot going on. I'm in a mild identity crisis. And when I say mild, I mean actually very intense identity crisis. I have no idea who I am or what I want. But one thing that I do know is my resets do a pretty good job at stabilizing me and this one is going to be my best reset in terms of my youtube videos thus far because i've upgraded so much stuff and i'm so ready to share all of it i'm so ready to implement all of this because i just know it's going to make my life a lot better august has like historically been a really good month for me but usually after august it kind of goes downhill so i am worried about that but i'm really excited for august and i'm just gonna embrace that for right now so let's get into our budget tracker okay guys so this is my new budget sheet i talked about it in my last reset but i didn't actually track june or july you'll see it at the bottom down here with my months it just goes from may to august so i actually don't have anything to review in terms of what my july budget looked like but i wanted to show off my new tracker i do just want to run through it and before i actually do that let me go to my credit history because I am supposed to be doing that and honestly I did so bad at following my budget in June and July which is why I didn't even track it because I knew it was so bad and you can just see that reflected in my credit score when I was doing really well I was at 790 and now I'm at 756 which isn't like the worst in the world I'm still very good but I was trying to get up in those 800s and now we can talk about the new budget tracker template so the only thing that I will say that I want to change for this later on is this one totals chart right here i think is what it says i'm gonna make this into some kind of trends chart so i think i'm probably gonna do total what is the word for it income minus expenses so like net positive amount i think would be kind of the right word for it however much money i come out with but because i haven't been doing a good job tracking it month by month i don't want to put that in yet so it's actually probably something that's gonna have to wait until 2024 to do the rest of it is pretty self-explanatory but i will go through it just a little bit say i get paid today which i don't but say i did and i made 900 i don't know just a random ass number this populates into the actual spending and that's compared Compared to what I was expected to make or expected to spin as per the other categories and we get a difference which is like the number that shows how far off I was all of the other categories are of course just variable expenses I have another category down here if it doesn't fit into any of these other ones this chart manages all of my spending so if I type income in here you won't see it it's just gonna show what I'm spending the most on outside of any of those fixed expenses and you can also see in my totals tab it does compare my income with my expenses and my savings the only other thing to explain here is this really really small section in the bottom right corner so these two guys my chase and my apple tab is just gonna be what i had on my credit card at the end of the month it doesn't really serve any purpose it doesn't link to any formulas it's just an indication of how much i put on my credit card and the check boxes are just to check that i actually paid them and lastly we have the quote unquote net worth number whatever that means it's my expected versus actual when it comes to my income my expenses and my savings which will come out to whatever number I walk away with you guys will have to tune in for my September monthly reset to actually see this in action and see if the new strategy kept me more in line I honestly think it will so July goals also kind of underwhelming in terms of the whole shebang all of this is going to be so much more understandable if you watch my last reset but essentially because i went on a really long trip through the first like 10 days of the month and also i went on a trip for the last four days of the month i only had like two and a half weeks to kind of be home so goals are kind of scarce right now so july was an extension of the goals that i didn't hit in june pretty well on them honestly i would say everyone who knows me is gonna make fun of this category i still have not cleaned my office which to me i'm like that is perfectly understandable because i've barely been here i think i have a better plan for that i think i'm gonna figure that one out but as for the content goals i think i did pretty well i did get to i want to say it's like day 86 
sick for Roots of Pacha. So I did get over 50 days and I think I might be able to get the 100 days video done probably by the end of August, maybe September. I said no missed days on TikTok. I'm actually gonna check that off because I had a lot of like break periods. I'm not mad at myself for it, but I'm not gonna pretend like I did it. And then I didn't hit 125 followers on gaming TikTok. I have not moved on that account like at all. I've been sitting at the same point it feels like for months now, but I did get 100 subscribers on both of my YouTube channels. I don't want to look at the July goals anymore. I have pretty much been waiting this entire month to move on to August because I felt like these were just so outdated almost and I knew I wasn't really gonna finish them because I've been so busy. This is what I have for August so far. I actually have them as a table right here and this actually connects to my home page we're not gonna look at the table because this is what i want to focus on so number one i have my monthly reset i actually think i am gonna put the monthly reset as an actual goal every month because it's like a project for me next one of my current goals in life how i want to self-improve and stuff is to become a better cook because i've been realizing how bad of a cook i actually am so i've been working on like a little digital recipe book that really makes me more motivated to cook and it's really easy for me to track my progress in. So I've been trying to do three new recipes a month, which is about one every week, give or take, expecting that I have a bad week once or twice. And then my last goal is to read at least one book. And ideally that would be in full. Like if I was 20% done with a book at the beginning of the month and I finished it, I'll still probably count it, but ideally I will read a full one. Moving on to errands and chores. This is in my head like the adult stuff. That's more so a one-time thing, not like my monthly expectations. I put one volunteering activity on there just because I haven't felt out volunteering with my new place yet. So I don't know if I'm gonna wanna do one a month or one every week or three a month. Like I haven't found my frequency yet. So for this month, it's not in my little every month or consecutive category until I figure out how much I wanna do. And then second, deep clean the office, as we've said, she is a broken record. <laughs> but this time I changed it up because I wanna make it a vlog. And I feel like I've been doing a really good job with filming and editing on this channel now. I'm like really serious about it now. That will be another thing we go a little bit deeper into later, but just leaving that there for now. We are deep cleaning the office this month. For production, of course we are going ham, still. First, I do want to start gathering some different kinds of music and sound effects for my YouTube channels. Usually what I do every single video, I go on Epidemic Sound and I just download one randomly that I see like on my home screen and I use that. I would like to get myself like folders on my computer and make like playlists on Epidemic Sound. I can almost have like motifs for different themes in my videos. Do I think I'll have like it all together by the end of this month? Not at all. I think I'm just gonna find like a couple songs that sound like me and I want to stick with. Alongside that, the first three goals in my little production category are kind of all like this. I want to fix my Premiere Pro layout. I already have it like modly set up the way I like, but I don't think my editing software is necessarily the most efficient for the way that I work. I don't think I have every single piece of it where I would like it to be. And I want the editing process to go as smoothly as possible. It was something I just wasn't ready to tackle for a long time, but now I think I'm finally there. I just redid all of my thumbnails on my gaming channel and you'll see the next goal is actually to redo all my lifestyle thumbnails on this channel. So I think for the most part, I will have a style developing and really cut down the process time. And then moving on, actually, I think this goal should be above the TikTok one. I do wanna post three videos to this channel. Last goal is 1,750 TikTok followers. I'm like right on the verge of 1,500. So I did have it as 1,500 about like at the midway point during the month. But then I realized that that wasn't enough of a stretch goal. So I took that off. I do think I could go a little bit harder for these goals. I think I could add some movement goals, but I'm leaving it at this. I think this is a good basis. I'm gonna try to follow it. Let's move on to the follower checkers, which I'm super excited for. So for the YouTube channel you're currently watching, I am still at 103 subscribers. Watch hours is 261 and views is at 13.6K. Damn, okay. My gaming channel is killing it. So for my gaming channel, I'm at 107 subscribers, 523 
10.5 watch hours and then 10.7 thousand views so i've actually breached 10,000. let's move on to tiktok so for tiktok it's looking like i'm 55 away from 1500 664 000 likes and then for my little gaming account i actually lost a follower and i got 58.3 thousand likes and lastly for instagram still have not been posting there at all somehow have 624 followers and it's like i'm literally doing nothing so thank you guys if you're following me on instagram so here we go on to the month of july what i've been watching reading and playing i'm so excited for this part i think i finally found my groove for this i know adding all of this makes the video so much longer but i want to talk about this so for watching i watched two shows first one is going to be too hot to handle season Five. I'm not finished with it yet. I don't think they've released all the episodes, but I would still give it a five out of five. Too Hot to Handle, I think my favorite reality show, definitely my favorite reality dating show. It's so stupid. It's honestly so bad when you think about it. And they have the same tropes, the same archetype. Every single season, like I'm really starting to notice how directed and just fake it is. Like I know they tell everyone to be who they're gonna be. It's just acting at this point and editing tricks. So I definitely feel like I've been getting like a reality check for what I'm actually watching this season, but I love it. I eat it up every single time. I honestly don't care. <laughs> five out of five every season. The second thing I watched was Queen Charlotte season one, because that's all there is to it. I like this show. I was struggling with it for a while, figuring out if I like actually liked it or not. I'm gonna give it a 3.5 out of five. I was having a really hard time figuring out how I liked it in reference to Bridgerton. And I had the same experience with Bridgerton. Like I just, like I was very conflicted on my feelings. I was like, I don't really think it's the best show made, but I can't stop watching. One thing I did like is I'm like obsessed with any depictions of King George. So it was really interesting to watch the portrayal. I felt with Bridgerton, it was so romance based and I'm like such a big romance person. There is obviously some romance with Queen Charlotte, but I feel like it was more storyline based. I don't know. I am a sucker for Bridgerton because I love a good love story and Queen Charlotte is a love story, but that's not what I liked it for. Like I wasn't liking it for the love story behind it. I was liking it just for the main storyline. It's really hard to explain and that's kind of why I was having a hard time rating it because I had a hard time explaining it. I'd probably put it at four stars but I don't feel like it's that good. Mostly just because I like Bridgerton more. Moving on to reading. Reading went ham this month. So I finished Crown of Midnight I guess. I didn't write that down. Yeah, I went from 39% to 100%. I honestly kind of forgot a lot of the plot line because I'm so much deeper in the series now, but that was my favorite book of the series by far. It was a five out of five. I think it's going to be my favorite out of the entire series, but I also read the Assassin's Blade. So if you know anything about Throne of Glass, the publishing order is kind of different from how some people like to read it. So I was told by some article that I read to read the Assassin's Blade after Crown of Midnight. I don't wish that I read the Assassin's Blade first, but I have also read Air of Fire, which in publishing order is book four. It comes after Crown of Midnight. So I wish I would have done Crown of Midnight, Air of Fire, then the Assassin's Blade in the last three books because the stuff that I read in Air of Fire feels like it makes more sense to do a jump to the past. But I only know that now that I've read Air of Fire. As soon as I read The Assassin's Blade, I was like, I almost wish I didn't read it at all. I kind of still feel that way. I liked it, but I don't know. I had a really hard time sticking to it. I had to push myself through the last like 30% because I felt like I was just going to stop reading it. And I was like, no, you're not going to like give up on the series and get demotivated and do the same thing you did with A Court of Thorns and Roses. So I was like, I'm just going to read it all in one go. And I did. <laughs> Compared to Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight, The Assassin's Blade was not comparative. It's a prequel book, but I'm really glad I didn't read it first because I don't think I would have been attached enough to the storyline. One thing I will say is some sections were way better than the others. I'm giving it three stars because some parts were worse and some parts were better. In the end, now that it's been like a week, or maybe two since I finished reading it. I do have like fond feelings towards it, but it did not have me hooked the way the other ones did. And then lastly, Air of Fire. And I finished it this morning right before I started filming this, but I got through 
through a huge chunk of it in the last two days. I'm trying to leave most of the media section spoiler free, but this one will have a tad bit of spoilers for Air of Fire and obviously any of the books prior to that, to Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, The Assassin's Blade, and Air of Fire. So I think this was pretty competitive with Crown of Midnight. Probably not gonna give it a full five stars, but probably like a 4.5, 4.8, like somewhere around there. One thing I will say, I didn't like anything with the witches. I mostly just skipped over that part and I feel like that's gonna bite me in the ass, but I just did not enjoy it. I was like, who is this woman? I don't care about her. I didn't read this book for her. And once again, it was kind of like hard to shift perspectives. Like every book I feel like is doing something new that like I didn't sign up for. So this one was giving you a lot of like switch perspectives, especially when something big was happening and they would switch back to someone else's perspective. I was like, why? But I really like Chow and I don't know if I'm supposed to like him. I don't know if I'm supposed to dislike him later. I don't know. I've heard stuff, but I'm fine with him. I really like Dorian a lot. So I was really excited when like all of Dorian's parts came up. Rowan's literally the only reason that I have to include spoilers in this section because I need to talk about him. Technically not really spoilers, but his presence in general is a spoiler. If he's not a love interest, I think I'm gonna lose it. I'm okay with Chow too. I just, I felt very deprived of romance in this book and I think I could be interested in a storyline, but my main motivator to keep reading is always holding out for a slow burn, which is also what happened with A Court of Thorns and Roses, is once the characters started kind of being solidified, I wasn't as into it anymore because there like wasn't anything else that could be done. The slow burn was already burned fully through. I don't know what's happening with this one. I don't know who she's gonna get with. I don't know if she's gonna get with anyone. And I am disturbed and I like, I'm in constant longing for her to get with someone. I've heard people say she kind of flip flops around in this book. So I, I am expecting that, but it doesn't matter if she flip flops. I'm not holding out for any person. I am just holding out for some person, mostly lean towards Rowan right now. But like at first I was like in game for Dorian and I'm not going to lie. And then once Chow came around, I was like, okay, this is fine. I'm still pretty in game for Dorian too. I'll take anyone. I think Chow's my least favorite. I don't know. Maybe there'll be a fourth guy that comes in. <laughs> like I don't get a lot of spoilers. I just remember like people. And I remember a long time ago seeing someone say, I love Rowan too much to give up Throne of Glass or something like that. But I feel like he's not going to be a love interest. It almost seems like they're like platonic soulmates. I'm gonna stop talking about this now and very quickly what I've been playing just gonna go over it real quick not really give a summary I've been playing tears of the kingdom Disney dreamlight valley and then roots of pacha of course for my 100 days video that I've been talking about so our last big section is going to be a very important section and that is just going to be about my language learning progress. I want this section in here to hold me more accountable and I know people online really love language learning content. It's part of my productivity thing. I just need to have this included. So I'm currently on a 21 day streak on Duolingo. My two focus languages are still French and Korean, but I have put Korean definitely on the back burner until I get everything else in my life together. So right now we're heavily focused on French. That is my kind of introduction back into learning my languages. I'm actually moving from A1 to A2 for my proficiency level. And what I want these resets to be for this is kind of a recap for me to figure out what I'm doing good at, what I feel comfortable with, and what I need to work on to kind of guide my exercises into the next month. So I am comfortable with reading and writing with a lot of the basic concepts like gender and verb conjugations, possessive negations, questions, object pronouns, some passe composé. I'm not fully comfortable with questions. I'm also not comfortable with contractions, reflexives, pronouns, adjectives, prepositions, passe composé versus imperfect, and relative pronouns. The things that I want to work on for August is speaking without a direct translation. So like if Duolingo gives me a sentence and tells me to translate that, to me that's not as hard. But if I'm trying to come up with my own sentence, if I'm just trying to tell you my hair is brown, <laughs> my hair is brown. If I just wanna tell you like my shirt, what color is this? My shirt is brown. I'm gonna get really tripped up like I'm doing right now. It's really iffy <laughs> when I try to just say stuff. I get really stressed out. But like I think 
for the most part, if you like pointed at something and asked me to tell you what it means in French, like I could pull off a lot, but I struggle to make a sentence on demand. I'm also extremely not comfortable with listening. If a French person spoke to me, I'd be very stressed out and anxious. And then I also need a lot more vocabulary. I've lost a good bit of my vocabulary over the years. And then I also need to work my conjugations and my genders along with the vocabulary. So like I said, like I'm good at the concept of conjugation, but there are so many exceptions and there are so many like switch ups that I don't fully know. <laughs> so give me some words and I can conjugate them, but a lot of them I can't because I don't have like the vocab for that. So I wanna do more speaking exercises and journaling. I think I am done with all the big sections. So let me know how you feel about this. Let me know how you feel about the new style. And also tell me if you like my hair or think I look stupid because I kind of think my braids look a little bit dumb. I'm finally gonna stop rambling. I'm sorry if this video is long, but I do hope to see you all in the next one. But yeah, that's all. Like, comment, subscribe. If you're feeling generous, I think that's all for today. Bye-bye.